kids. generation of kids, they going to hell. <laughs> they don't have no connection to God. This the scariest group of black people I ever seen because they don't know God, huh? They got the Hebrews, they got the more, they got everybody telling them about a God, and can't nobody show them what God looked like in the manifestations of a human. Grandmama coming down to the court, standing up in court, saying to the judge, Yana, and, 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 and the judge seeing your mom, your grandmama's God been giving you favor because of your grandmama. Your mama coming down to the prison and the prison people seeing your mama pray with you before y'all leave visitation and they treating you different because of your mama. They know you a boy. You see what I'm saying? They don't have this. Our black kids don't have no protection. They don't even have nobody standing in the gap for them and God. They just on their own. They, standing their way out here. They, <laughs> listen. They have to go to jail and they have to die because it ain't nothing God can do with them. Why you think there's so many young people dying today? We ain't never seen this before. We ain't never seen young. They have to because it ain't nothing God can do with these hearts of young people because of the fruit that they come from. The seed and the fruit is all the same. Mm. Sit your up down. Some of these little ain't mm. never had a hug from Big Mama. They grandmama said, I'm, I'm too young to be a god grandmama. Call me, me, ma. Don't call me grandmama. Grandmama don't even want to be young. Don't even want to be called grandmama. So <laughs> you can't just go up and lay your head on the chip. Why, what the f you want? Why I'm ticking you got kid? I'll, I'll be having your mama come get you. They being rejected like straight off. Get away from her. Get. <laughs> Nobody's hugging and nurturing and breathing life into these little black motherfuckers, homie. So <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Get out the way of God. Go get the ones that ain't got no problems. The ones with the problems. If you let them get 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 with that anger and that hate and it reaches their body size, they'll hurt you for trying to correct them. They'll hurt you for trying to correct them. <laughs> All right, Charleston White. Um, is he right? Is this generation of kids, can God do nothing with them? Is, is it too late? A strong statement to say yeah, God can't, can't do nothing, do nothing with them. Nah, um, that's, that's but I, what I will agree with is, like he was saying, like you know, back in the day we were talking about before, like that godly element of the family, the big mama, the grandma, the household. Mm -hmm. Now I be seeing grandmamas and daughters going to the same club together, yep, messing facts. with the same men. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like it ain't really no hierarchy. It's no patriarchy. It's no, you know, what I'm saying it's nothing in the family no more. Yeah. It's just everybody just kind of go for what you know and I think that is affecting us uh, we don't really have a lot of solid people who want to be role models to impact mm -hmm. the young people's lives everybody's saying well, shoot I ain't no role model shoot do what you got to do survive do whatever mm -hmm. and I see so many kids I was in Virginia doing the outreach uh -huh. and um, <clears throat> we'll talk to that kid Yeah, 12 years old and you look yeah. at him he look like he look like he look like a square yeah like he's he like square. an innocent I don't say square a bad way he like an innocent like I wouldn't have picked him up out of a lineup at all never like, bro Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. And this dude, his mama coming to us, dang near in tears, talking about how he done got suspended from school three or four times. He, he, he listened to gang little, activity, gang activity, listening to NBA young boy and all these folks trying to live this stuff out. And I'm like, man, she was pleading with us. You can see it in her eyes. She's like, please talk to him. We spent mm -hmm. time, we talked to him, just try to make it make sense for him. But that's just one kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got a whole project down there. We was in the kids. project. We was in with, the project yeah. in the middle of the same mentality. You got neighborhoods all over the country where young people are still seeing this stuff and people are letting tablets raise their kid they're letting yeah. tv raise their kid they're yeah. not spending time with their child they're not having no tough conversation and stuff that's why i always salute dub because i see dub talking to his daughters like letting them know what's up a lot of folks they get tired from work and everything else and they just put a tablet in front of them or a tv yeah. in front of them or just send them somewhere go outside go sit down like yeah. you don't want to do nothing with your own kids then when, when he go out here and, and, and do something crazy oh my baby like yeah. you have plenty of opportunity to mm -hmm. pour into your child to keep them from having this kind of mentality but you rather just do your thing and you see that yeah. too often yeah. Um, yeah. unfortunately yeah, so, what, so what do we do because I mean like you said you're you're relying on the parents to pour into their children yeah. some of them are and what they pouring is trash yeah. exactly yeah. They, yeah. they are pouring into them they telling yeah. them yeah go sleep yeah. with whoever you want yeah, yeah. Like just sure don't get pregnant yeah. 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 yeah just don't bring no babies saying? in this house like that's yeah. what they're being saying. taught yeah. from yeah. their families yeah. 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 yeah i think it was always hard for us um i know when i used to do youth ministry back in the day um we as a team we, we would plan we would sit down we were like okay we're gonna do these we're gonna do this in praise and worship we're gonna do this blah 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 
But then it hit me like years after that, I was they we was talking and talking to the the staff and stuff, and we would say like this doesn't matter if you go home and it's we we only got you for like right two hours, yeah, but yeah. if you go home for the rest of your time mm-hmm. and your mom and like we had. Like the church and the youth ministry got to partner with the parents. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or even like, like, like y'all was saying, like the parents have to realize that being a Christian matters to your kids. Yeah. Because if they don't see it, they gonna be like, my mama. It don't work for my mama. So, yeah. w- w- I, 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 that's yeah. a good point because I, I teach youth. I teach um, the youth now in my church. And I'll get some kids that come in there don't know nothing about Jesus, don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah. They'll be like, "Well, I thought I thought God was this," and I thought, and it's like, "Who are your parents? Yeah, not, what are y'all yeah. talking about? They don't know nothing, like yeah. zero. Like I, I'm asking, and these are like 10, 12, you know, yeah. zero information about Jesus, yeah. zero. I have to start from scratch. Yeah, yeah. it's like wow, like how how are we supposed to combat that when they're being yeah. taught not just by their families but by the media? That's yeah. why we do this show is to yeah. combat some of these." Things that get pushed to these yeah. kids. The apple don't fall too far. How do we compete too. with that? I remember in school too, bro. Yeah, I remember being in youth ministry, and on Wednesdays, youth ministry was a babysitter. It was a babysitter. It was a babysitter. Yeah. They, they would drop their kids yeah. off. Mm-hmm. They would go out, do their thing, come back three hours later, pick them up, mm-hmm. and it was like they don't know what their kids are getting. They don't know what mm-hmm. we're pouring into them, so they don't know how to. Um, how to talk about it, but I heard my, my pastor say this in a sermon one day. He talked about the family being a degree off, right? He talked about when a plane takes off from California headed to New York, if it's off by two degrees, it'll end up in the Carolinas, right? Mm-hmm. And he's basically saying, like, for every generation that's a degree off, by the time you get to the grandparents mm-hmm. and the great grandkids, mm-hmm. this whole thing is just they're we're, off. We're and off, so yeah. you got generational curses coming in. You mm-hmm. got parents that, like, I know somebody personally who. Their mother had them at 17, then, I'm sorry, their mother had them at 19, then they had a child at 17, then their child had a child at 14. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it, it goes down this this pattern of uh, unchecked, uncorrected behavior. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. So, so is he right? Or, or is this generation lost? What are we supposed to do? I don't think it's, it's lost. Not lost. What are we supposed to do when they're getting all this thrown at them constantly? You got to. Like I said, I mean, you you got to be the you got to be the one. You got to yeah. be the example to whoever whoever you can be, the yeah. one too. You have to be the example to that. You got to be honest. Yeah. You got to have these conversations. You got to ask your kids yeah. who their friends are. Yeah. Who they who they influence. So it's like we have a responsibility. Non you know. non celebrities, non whatever would what you call them, regular people have to start stepping up. And telling mm-hmm. these celebrities, telling these artists that this is not what they want. Right? Remember when um, yes, yes. I was telling you guys this in the chat earlier this week? Um, Nelly, he tried to come to Spellman right after doing that tip drill video, mm-hmm. and the Spellmanite shut it down. They were like, yeah. nah, you can't come up in here after you've disrespected women right. sliding credit cards and things um, <laughs> through their body parts. Like, you can't <laughs> do that. And so that's where, that's where it starts. That that's fine. where the change will happen if. Regular people who are listening to this music or consuming this music stop saying no. Enough is enough. This BET yeah. award situation should have never happened. No. I, oh, here's should a question. Never happened. Um, VC said, "Can we address the elephant in the room? Why is this prevalent in the black community?" Man, I think because I would say it's. I, I was just say it's different. I, I I grew up around a lot of white kids. They got yeah. their own problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, got, they got totally yeah. different problems. Yeah. They're not, they got they magnified. <laughs> They're not as magnified. As we we you know our music, that's what I'm going our to say. music yeah. has always spoken from like we, our artists from the beginning were narrators of what broken glass everywhere. Yeah. Like they were narrators of what was mm-hmm. going on around them. Yeah. You know you had, um, it wasn't really the same in uh in in rock music, soft rock. I mean, you know I. Yeah, they didn't really expose a lot of a lot of these things. I think, wasn't, I, I think the, difference, wasn't, yeah. the difference is this. I think with, um, with, and this is this could be a stereotype. I don't know, but mm-hmm. maybe with white people at times, like they can love use our music for mm-hmm. example. They can love our music, but mm-hmm. they know I'm gonna still be a doctor. I'm gonna still be a lawyer. Yeah. I'm gonna still be this. And then it's whereas, the guy kind of, yeah. Whereas it's, little it's, Johnny's yeah. like. NBA young boy is my yeah. God. Man. I want to. I want to. No, I'm dead serious. Yeah. I want to worship him. I'm gonna yeah. learn what he knows, and whatever he's teaching me, I'm gonna walk that out. You just said 
a little boy, and, and there's so many mm-hmm. young boys that look like you. Like you, you got a record. You don't even look like you got a record right, that's man. involved with that. Like when yeah. you're like in like influenced by the music so bad that you're like willing to die for somebody that you've never met before in your life. And well, that like, goes like to that. Us, that goes to. I mean, it's layers, right? Yeah, it's a slave so, mentality. So it's a slave mentality. I mean, you got to think like when we when we were freed from slavery, you know, that they, they were trying to lock up as many black men as they could yeah. to keep them in slavery. Yeah, yeah. So that so then are the family the the, the family dichotomy is broken up, and there's no fathers in the household, and we go through that. And some somebody told like James, and we talk about fatherhood all the time. I don't have a blueprint of what that looks like, right? Because yeah. mine was taken away. Right. So it's like. You know, we don't have the and then and then and then when there was fathers around. I'm not saying this is not. I'm not. This is not a. I'm not throwing a blanket on our whole culture. But I'm saying for the most part, there were dads around. But what what did they do? They worked. Mm, yeah. yeah. Then yeah. they got home and it's like, nah, leave your daddy, leave your daddy alone. Your daddy's <laughs> got to sleep. Yeah, you know, bro, that tired. wasn't that wasn't and that it, long yeah. ago. That slave yeah. stuff. Cause mm. people fail to realize Ronald Reagan was the president in the '80s, right? Harriet Tubman was still alive when Ronald Reagan was in the White House. Mm. So you think about that. Like, that was just in the 80s. Yeah. So you think about the stuff that was going on during slavery, things like buck breaking and people, uh, yeah. fathers being separated from homes, the strongest mm-hmm. slaves being taken and being used while yep. the mother and child was there to fend for themselves. So then you got Willie Lynch to come along who built the whole culture and society over here based off of that same mentality, those same kind of thoughts. So now what you see is, Blacks, we talking about black people. We were in the lower end of society. We got the least amount of resources. We got a liquor store in every corner. We got church's chicken on every corner. You got McDonald's on every corner. You go to a more affluent neighborhood where you have our Caucasian friends. Not to say all of them bad or nothing. I'm not being racist. But do you see a package store on every corner? Do you see a, a church of chicken on every corner? Do you see Popeyes every two miles? Yeah. Do they got five McDonald's in a twenty mile radius? No, they don't. Do you see uh, gentrification going on in their neighborhood where they're taking homes from people? They're marking up the prices, and now yep. we can't afford to stay there, so exactly. they pushing everybody on one side of town who's Red broke line. and trying to survive. Mm-hmm. So what you gonna do? You gonna pray on one? It's the Hunger Games. You gonna pray on each other because you're trying to survive. Yep. This is what's going on. And then you got somebody who making music who come out with a big chain on with a nice car, making a whole bunch of money. He's the he Robin Hood. He's the hero. Yeah. Yeah. He made it out of this to that. So I want to be like him. Mm-hmm. Whatever he says, whatever he does, I can relate to him because he came from the same that's environment. Basically, they clone Tyrone. You, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what we're okay. seeing. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And right. it's been going on for ages. And so what has to happen is the people who have this influence, they have to love people more than they love money. Yeah, they have to right. love people more than they love their position and their star power and all the rest of this stuff. You got to say, you know what? Instead of me getting all this money, I'd rather use my influence to help people. If that means I got to lose all this, oh, well. But who's going to do that? Ain't yeah. nobody going to do that. Because you got a house nigga, and then you got yeah. the field nigga. And the house nigga ain't trying to go back out in that sun. <laughs> he going to stay in the house. He's so he not trying to go back to being broke neither. He going to do what master say. If yeah. I do what master say, I'm going to stay in the house. If I make these kind of songs, I could be rich. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm a young lady like making these kind of songs for these young girls to follow, so now you want the dudes to either be gay or be gangsters. So if you're gay, you can't reproduce and be a father for real. If you if you're a gangster, you're gonna be a dead or in the grave. Orange, yeah, so where yeah. are our role models at? Where are our heroes right. at? If you're exactly. a girl, you gay, you girl on girl stuff, you can't reproduce, you're not nurturing, you're not being yeah. a mother. Yeah. If you out here being a thought, you broken the pieces on the inside, don't know where you're going. Uh-huh. So our culture is in shambles. So yeah. somebody yeah. has to say, I love people more than I love these things they're trying to give me. Mm-hmm. I can't let the keep people keep buying my voice. They keep keep buying my thoughts, keep buying us. Like right. we have to really stand right. up and say, I love we love each other. And people love things more than they love each other. Yeah. So that's why we are where we but are. But I'll say this real quick. I that's think what Will Smith did. But, but, I, but I think I think At that's the, the Awards, But I think that's the <laughs> importance of you guys, like and us, like when you guys do outreach and yeah. when you when mm-hmm. you go talk and you tell somebody like, "Yo, this yeah. is a um, a better way for you than going into the streets and yeah. then all those other things." So I think that's just what we have to look at yeah. as as what's going on in the streets and stuff of that nature. And um, I think. Um, they was saying Harriet Tubman died in 19. There was something I read. They said Harriet Tubman, she was alive when Ronald Reagan was alive or something like that. Well, Ronald Reagan probably was born 
Yeah. Oh, Maybe yeah. not when he was president. Yeah, president. Freddie, 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 he was alive. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ronald Reagan was alive the same time that Harry Tubman was alive. I had a fact check too, man. I was like. Yeah. <laughs> she, my, that was my fault. He was alive <laughs> when she was alive. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. president in the 80s. So I'm he was sure, probably sure born in like. I don't know if that's true too. Man, yeah. they've been up a long time. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, these folks, these folks been up for a long time and we've been playing catch up for a long time. So, yeah. So, I, I, so yeah. even with all that, what do you do? What are we going to do? Because, I mean, we could say that and say all oh, this and this and this. But right from this moment forward, we have to try and fix well, we, it. Well, we, I would we, say this real quick. Yeah. Nobody's unreachable. We got to kill that. Yeah. Jesus can reach anybody yeah. for his glory.